Hello beautiful people and viewers at home. We are here once again in your screen. Um, but there's something very special about today because we're having a super special edition on Ladies Lounge. I have two amazing, amazing guests with us. First, to my left, I have Chemad Abebe. Very, very lovely, lovely lady. And she's with the Terence Higgins Trust. Yeah, that's correct. Yes. Yeah. And, but you know what? She's going to be telling us a lot more about herself. I have to my right here, it's Vetti. Hey. I'm sure a lot of people must have seen Vetti. Vetti was very popular last year. <laughs> Extremely popular. She was the and face. And still is. And still is. She's the, <laughs> she's the face of um, of the HIV campaign, which had her interviewing Prince Harry. Ooh. Wow. Had a good chance. Oh, yeah. She, exactly. <laughs> yes. You know, so that's Vetti. We, so we have this two special gorgeous lady here, who ladies who are going to be telling us so much about HIV. I will start with you. We, by the way, her name is Chama, but we call her Cham. I love that because you're so charming. She's so pretty. Aww, we have beautiful thank people you. here. She's so pretty. So Cham, Very please flattering. tell us. Oh, <laughs> but it's the truth. Please tell us a little bit more about yourself and sure. why you are doing this. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's EJ Roll or EJ. Yes. Yes. Please. Absolutely. Um, she said I work for the Times Against Trust. And I project manage the National HIV Prevention Program, which runs, it starts with me in National HIV Testing Week, which Yvette was the wonderful campaign model who had yes. the chance to get close to Prince Harry and how show him how testing was done. For a day. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. She was a princess for a day. Yeah. Now, this is, I think there's something we need to understand here because we know that this is such a huge, this is a big deal, HIV awareness and campaign. But we want to clear, we just want to know first, you know, what is HIV? A lot of people know, but it's, 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 it's nice to refresh our viewers' memory. So what is HIV? Yeah, I think like you're just right. a definition. Yeah, I mean it's something that you know people may hear commonly talked about, but really I think it's always good to go to basics and just remind ourselves Absolutely. what does it mean nowadays? What does it mean to to us? And HIV uh, is a virus which uh, is mainly passed on through sexual activity, but it can also be passed on through blood transfusion transfusions, organ donations. Um, in other ways, but mainly through sexual activity. And um, it is different from AIDS, which um, people sometimes mix up the two, but they're very different. Yes, I can, yeah. They're, they're related, mm -hmm. but AIDS um, is something when HIV was first discovered, it was considered late stage HIV, but it is now we, we made so many medical advancements that in the UK people actually don't get AIDS anymore. So what is AIDS? AIDS, um, it stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome and it's when a person's immune system has been so affected by the virus okay. that their immune system doesn't work anymore okay. and so it makes them able to get other serious illnesses very easily mm. so aids was when they have three or more other conditions like tuberculosis or right. pneumonia but okay. it's not actually a disease on its own okay. it just means their immune system is completely is shut lower? down oh. um yeah so hiv is the virus um and that aids is the syndrome which people don't experience in the uk so Amazing. what is so that takes us so what is the myth be uh, surrounding hiv the reason myths are only HIV, what is that? I think the biggest myth around that is that HIV will lead to AIDS. Or if someone is worried, um, if I get an HIV diagnosis, that means that I am going to get AIDS. People still have a lot of myths um, around the 80s and the 90s when HIV was first discovered. Mm -hmm. And they think that it's still the same today, but it's wrong. I was saying the oh. medical advances have come so far and it's incredible. Oh. Thanks to um, ART, uh, which is the medication people take, um, it brings the virus, the HIV virus, mm. so down in their blood wow. and in all their cells that they're healthy, they live long and healthy lives, they're well, they can do anything, have relationships, go skydiving. <laughs> uh, skydiving. One. I mean, that's, that's not personally <laughs> my thing. 
but it also means they won't pass it on to other people. Right. So and you know, it is a myth as well. We say in general that people think if you come, you know, if you you come in contact, contact. with somebody with uh, yeah. HIV, you catch HIV. It doesn't happen like that. That's the myth. Or you have HIV, you're going to die, and that's not true. That's not what it is. But is that because the the people are not? as aware as yes, exactly. you would want them Absolutely. to be. Yes. <laughs> and that's what stigma does. It stops people from going out and trying to find out that information. Yeah. And it stops them from testing. Some are like, oh, it's better if I don't know. Yeah. You know, and others, know. you know, they just, all they've seen is old campaigns from the 1980s. Mm. They aren't exposed to the current information. They don't know about treatment or how quick and easy testing is. Mm. Yeah. So it is quick and easy. Quick and easy. How um, quick and how easy? <laughs> yeah, so there's different ways people can test depending on what's right for them. Okay. You can always go down to a sexual health clinic or mm -hmm. to their GP and ask for tests. Uh, but we've come to a time now where it's as easy as a pregnancy test. Okay. You can order a kit online, mm -hmm. do it yourself in the privacy of your home and you can if you want it to to be your results given by a professional you can post it to a lab and after a week they'll give you your results they'll have it posted to you or you yes, have yes they post you the test and then you do it and you send it back and a professional health professional gives you the results because some by people, a phone call or call yeah, you yeah, by so a phone call okay because some people want that assurance of having somebody else but the most recent advancement is actually being able to read the results yourself. Okay. So everything That's is over and done within 15 minutes. So I'm going to ask you, are these treatments free? Are they free treatments? Yes, 100% free in the UK. HIV can affect anyone, anytime, you know. And a lot of people let that fear or the idea of identifying with that with our campaign or something like, oh, it means it's only black people. Mm -hmm. The facts are that it's true that especially black African communities are the most affected in the UK by HIV. Why is that? Sorry. Just before because, you move yeah, on, why, why, yeah, something? why, why, why is it that it's, you know, mostly the black people mm -hmm. that are affected? Um, it's hard to pinpoint reasons when you're looking at like entire communities. Is it cultural? Like, um, I think there are definitely, uh, cultural factors mm. which may have contributed to that. Mm. So in general, a lot of African communities, and they're different, but they are reluctant to talk openly about sexual health. Mm. Um, there's a reluctance, you know, there's uh, around supporting really complete sex and health education in schools. Oh, just um, people aren't that open. Mm. And the biggest and most common way people get HIV is through ignorance, Yeah, you know, and through not having the tools or knowing about the tools and confidence mm -hmm. to use things like condoms, to go and buy a condom confidently from the supermarket, you know. Most African people in the UK or in Europe, they think once they have left Africa, mm -hmm. they are you know, they, there's no, um, you cannot catch it. It's like, oh, you are safe, yeah. but we're actually not safe. He said to me, you will find more girls to have you, who will tell you, I don't need that because I, we, I won't catch that. Mm -hmm. And they will not use it, you know. Yeah, use they, don't, they don't use condoms. When in Africa, actually, apparently, girls would be like, no, I'm not having it without condoms. Mm -hmm. So we're actually thinking that we are in Western countries and we think we are safe, but we are not that's actually not, not safe at all. Yeah. So. And that's one of the common things, I think, especially when you're talking about like Black African communities, there's that idea that, you know, we left it back in Africa. It's not yeah. something we need to think about. And that's why they have outdated ideas. Mm. And it's important to remind everyone, you know, I was just going to say that, test. Yeah treat protect and mm. know that you know there's a lot of ways you can take care of yourself it's still a priority Boys. so what are the ways to prevent hiv like tell the simple ways to do that apart from using condoms and other testing yeah and hopefully having the chance to make friends sorry <laughs> <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> um that's another way <laughs> Um, okay. You know, Prince Harry optional, I suppose. Um, <laughs> yeah. So testing, mm -hmm. uh, condoms, and there is a new accepted way, which is called PrEP. Prep. Oh, just going to come yeah, in. and it's an HIV a pill that can prevent HIV being passed on. Mm -hmm. And another thing is treatment. Mm -hmm. So I think 
I mean, you may wonder, well, how does treatment really stop someone from getting it or stop someone mm-hmm. from giving it to somebody else or, um, you know, or how does getting tested actually stop it, stop it yeah. right? Oh, I thought it's only condoms mm-hmm. you know, that stops it physically, but, you know, um, so I, I mentioned a little bit earlier that the treatment, the drug, it re- brings down the virus in mm-hmm. the blood to such a low level, mm-hmm. um, it's called undetectable. And what it means oh. is that lab tests, um, most lab tests, they can't even detect that there's any virus. That's how low it is. Wow. So that's why they can't pass it on to somebody else. And they did a lot of research where these couples, one person had HIV, one person didn't, um, more than a thousand couples, they had sex and there was not a single case passed on and they had sex without a condom. Zero wow. So what wow. you're saying is when <laughs> the virus is reduced to that level, yes. do they stop taking the medication? No, 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 no. Oh, okay, no. so it's they, like a lifelong no, treatment. It is, it is a lifelong treatment. Um, I'm, I am saying, you know, in a sense, you know, we live in an exciting time. We've seen mm-hmm. a lot of progress, a lot of change, um, thanks to modern medicine. Um, but it is still a serious condition yes. and, and that's just... um, it does affect the lives of people living with HIV, yeah. especially the stigma. But yeah. thankfully with the medication, a lot of the times it's as simple as one drug a day, one pill a day. It's really improved a lot um, and um, it there's a lot of hope, you know, people live normal lives. But they do still take that and they have to take the medication. Adherence is really important because that's what keeps people undetectable. That's mm. when they can't pass it on. There's so much to talk about. We'll be right back. We're going to be finding out, you know, um, how often testing should be done. And then we're just going to go back to there's a question we're going to, that she asked about, you know, the drugs. Because we want to know, we would love the audience to know, um, can people get exhausted from taking these drugs? We'll be right back. Mm.